Why, I bet you've never even heard of the Grand Prix West France. Formerly the GP Plouay, but believe it or not, it's actually part of the UCI World Tour. Unlike, say, at Nisblatt or the Tour of California. Blame for this can be pushed onto the UCI for being lousy at picking top-tier events, Hongzhou China comes to mind, the race's own marketing, which highlights Plouay's convenience to a number of other cities you've never heard of, and the US media for, uh, not really covering it. Low-profile, high-points races, what could possibly go wrong with that? Anyway, the course is a 27-kilometer circuit, a few tight spots, and the primary obstacle being the Côte de Timarec, which, with its average pitch of 5.2%, is not reliably decisive. The day's break, four riders, all from French teams, though it did include an Eritrean, pulled their advantage out as far as 16 minutes before an Astana and Omega Pharma-led chase slowly brought them back, despite being hindered by that one flavor of energy bar that no one really seems to want. At 51k to go, Cyril Gautier launched the first attack out of the bunch, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense since he has a teammate up the road, but it's Europe car, so whatever. About 8k later, Katusha's Simon Spielock made another attack, touching off 10 kilometers of relentless surge and chase racing where dudes like Green Edge's Luke Durbridge, Sky's David Lopez, and Vacancelet's Bertan Lindemann yanked groups numbering 2 to about 20 off the front, only to see them recaptured seconds later. Finally, as the original break was caught at 32k to go on the penultimate ascent of the Timarek, Lindemann's teammate Mirko Salvaggi finally managed to get clear, but inexplicably decides 4k later that nah, he'd rather be back in the bunch. His recapture set off another flurry of attacks, ended bluntly by Omega Pharma's Dries Devenins, who soloed for a full 3k with Argos Shimano's Tom Dumoulin, dangling awkwardly about 4 seconds behind. Movistar's Giovanni Visconti, a double stage winner at this year's tour, was the next to try his luck, and might have gotten somewhere had Lotto's Tim Wellens bothered to take a single pull at the front. Still, Visconti and Cannondale's Christian Corin managed to keep ahead of a BMC-driven chase for the next 8 kilometers until Omega Pharma very cleverly attempted to launch Michal Kwiatkowski using the just-recaptured breakaway as a roadblock. Kwiatkowski took over about halfway up the climb, where the road changes from a narrow path to a four-lane highway, with Argos Shimano's John Degenkolb and BMC's Greg Van Avermet just behind him. Next man in line is BMC Uber teammate Daniel Oss, who wisely sits up, propagating the split. That's probably a race-winning move, but despite hopping around Degenkolb to prevent a gap, Van Avermet doesn't come around to drive pace. Kwiatkowski remained on the front, swerving across the road to nudge Van Avermet into helping out as Astana's Enrico Gasparato and Oss start to bridge across, which is like, okay, I can see not wanting to take Degenkolb to the line, but he's suffering and now it's two out of five. Just go, Greg! But no, he'll wander across the road and now it's a group of nine with the pack closing. Gasparato realizes the danger immediately and takes off, but doesn't quite have the horsepower, especially after towing Oss a few meters earlier. That doesn't disqualify him from being a good companion, but again Van Avermet defers, signaling for someone else, probably Oss, to take up the chase. Finally, at the very crest of the hill, with Gasparato caught and the pack practically on them, Van Avermet drops the long-awaited hammer, punching clear decisively with 3km to go. He's got all the power you could imagine, but a cross headwind and a slight downhill into the finish make it all but impossible to go alone, and the catch comes at 300 meters. Torhushov's in a position to save the day for BMC, but he's absolutely blown away by an early launch from Radio Shack's Giacomo Monazzolo, well outside 200 meters to go. But watch as Pippo Pizzotto lurks in the wheels on the downwind side of the road, following Astana's Borat Bozic, and not so much as sniffing the breeze until the final 100 meters. Pizzotto has ground to make up, but he's fresh, and unlike Lotto's Jurgen Rolance, he's got a clean path to the finish line. In the end, it's tight, but the Lamprey Rider's momentum and Nizzolo's tired legs make it a much-needed win for the erstwhile classic star. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that's how the race was won.